It was a fortress, and they trusted in that, became complacent. It was also a city of great wealth. It was known for money. Sardis discovered the secret of separating gold from silver, thereby producing both metals of a purity never known before. This was an economic revolution. For while gold nuggets, panned or mined, were used as currency, their purity was always suspect and a hindrance to trade. Such nuggets or coinage were naturally occurring alloys of gold and silver known as electrum, and one could never know how much of it was gold and how much of it was silver. Sardis now could mint nearly pure silver and gold coins, the value of which could be and was trusted throughout the known world. This revolution made Sardis rich. Sardis is famed in history as the place where modern currency was invented. So there was wealth there. What did they begin to trust in? Their, their fortress, their security, their wealth, their money, their prestige, their notoriety. Does that happen to us as believers today, as Christians today, as the modern uh, evangelical church in America today? We're safe in what is thought to be the fortress of America, our once great military, our economics, and yet we are on the brink of collapse economically. Our enemies are outpacing us militarily at many, many levels. Most Americans don't know this, but America has become apathetic. Many American Christians have become apathetic and passive. And this is a real danger. And this is what is perhaps happening as we understand the cultural and economic and historical background of what's going on in Sardis. Is this what's happening to this church? Have they been influenced by the culture? Have they jumped into the cultural stream and been taken downstream? Moving along, not resisting the stream, but going with the flow, if you will, this church? Isn't that what's happened and happening in America today? So much of the modern church on a given Sunday morning looks like a nightclub performance. Does it look like they're worshiping and honoring a righteous and holy God? Or does it look like they're singing songs about their boyfriend or girlfriend? the thumping music, the lights, the smoke machines. It looks more like the world than a group of people coming together collectively to study the Bible, to use their spiritual gifts or the edification of the saints and the equipping of the saints and to honor the Lord, worship the Lord in reverence, coming before him in reverence and respect and awe. No, the church services of the average America today, average American church today, looks more like something coming from the culture because much of what has happened to America was going on in Sardis. The church is being carried away by the cultural stream. And in fact, John Wolverd writes this, much of the city practiced pagan worship and there were many mystery cults or secret religious societies. You know what's very troubling? What's very troubling is that we have this pagan worship now that has also penetrated the churches of America. Perhaps there was some of this paganism creeping into the church there of Sardis. But we have people today doing so-called Christian yoga. That's, that's nothing more than occultism, paganism. There's nothing Christian about yoga. I won't belabor the point. I mention it all the time. The word yoga means yoke or union with a Hindu god. Why would anyone want to do that? What is the purpose of yoga? to make the natural world dissolve and enter the spiritual world where you supposedly acquire some kind of hidden knowledge, esotericism, hidden knowledge. And yet today we have Christian yoga. What an oxymoron. So much of what was going on in Sardis, the paganism, the secret societies. By the way, how many of our churches, particularly here in the South, the secret society of Freemasonry, how many of our deacons in the South, pastors in the South, are members of the secret religious society known as Freemasonry? Mm -hmm. I could do a whole program on that. 